Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, March 27th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. We got another great diary from Jim about yet another tool that he created, linuxpackages.sh. This is meant for forensics in Linux. It's typically pretty straightforward, depending on the distribution you're using, to figure out what packages were installed on this system. Well, not so easy if you mounted a file system that you acquired from another system, like for forensics analysis, to figure out what packages were exactly installed on that particular system. There are, again, according to the distribution, a number of different locations where databases are being kept of installed packages. Well, what uh, Jim's script does is it scours all of these different locations, figures out what packages are installed, and then simply lists them. Pretty easy to use tool and pretty useful to, for example, figure out, well, was the system updated or is there any odd malicious package being installed? Maybe any odd system service or so that was installed that may have contributed to the compromise of that system. No need for the analyst to spend a lot of time figuring out what distribution was installed and where the database are being kept. Just run the script and it does all that boring work for you. And then there's an interesting sort of follow-up blog post. Remember I talked about the loop uh, denial of service uh, condition that apparently a number of UDP applications suffer from where an error is being responded to with an error message. There's now an interesting blog post from Damien Menger with uh, the Google security reliability uh, team. And uh, This blog post goes over some of these issues with Quick and how they were resolved in Quick. There were a couple cases where Quick also suffered from some of these loop issues. Well, uh, in part, what it came down to was don't send an error and respond to an error. In this particular case, answering a reset with a new reset. Quick, similar to TCP, has resets. And of course, in TCP also, you don't respond to a reset for just that reason. A couple other sort of small issues, uh, for example, that reset in Quick requires some unpredictable filler. Well, if you are using actually, and that was of the early implementation, a cryptographically secure pseudorandom number generator, then it takes quite significant CPU load to actually create all these packets. And it's not really necessary to be cryptographically secure here. Interesting blog post for anybody who wants to learn a little bit more about how these protocols are designed. And a lot of companies these days, of course, are jumping on the bandwagon of AI and are spending quite a bit of money on servers that are specifically designed to do AI training. Well, uh, these servers apparently aren't always used. And of course, they are installed very quickly, not configured correctly, and just exposed to the internet using software like Ray. Ray is software that's often being used uh, to do this kind of training. It's a software released by any scale. It had a couple of vulnerabilities here. But uh, the real problem is that these systems are being exposed. And now these vulnerabilities named Shadow Ray are being exploited in order to attack these servers. Well, uh, we have had a similar exploits in the past against you know, some components of sort of typical AI machine learning uh, tool chains. Certainly nothing really sort of that groundbreaking. And I totally get it. Uh, These are great systems for crypto mining since these companies probably don't do much useful stuff with it anyway. Well, uh, crypto mining is probably not that much more dangerous here. What's probably more dangerous and uh, something that may sort of happen under the smokescreen of some of these crypto coin payloads is any effect that attacks may have on the machine learning process, like someone who is, for example, tainting data or the systems being used to then derive conclusions from that data. 
And it was just about 10 years ago in February 2014 that we wrote about the moon malware. It was one of those malware families that infected IoT devices like home routers. Amazing to see, well, it's still going around. Black Lotus Labs found the latest version targeting ASUS routers. Apparently, there are about something like 6,000 of them currently infected by that malware, and it's turning them into proxy servers. I guess we haven't really made that much of a difference these last 10 years. With that, uh, thanks for listening, thanks for recommending this podcast, and thanks for leaving good reviews, clicking those five stars in the Apple Podcast app, and, well, of course, subscribing to listening to this podcast. Thanks, and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.